All right, welcome to the May 28th Aries Cloud Asian Python user group meeting for 2024. Um, update on code coverage, um, update on the Dependabot PRs and what actions we need to take, um, a poll on 1.0 progress. Um, I, this might have been talked about last time, so we might not need to go to through it, the no transport um, startup option that um, Patrick has proposed. And then um, I added it into the menu, but didn't um, put it into the summary, which is BBS support handling and Apple M1 M star silicon. Um, want to talk about um, BBS support and how it's affecting um, Akapai in a larger sense and some possible solutions to that. So um, those are the topics and obviously any other topics people want to have. Um, <clears throat> as you can tell, we're recording, so I'll post the recording after the call. Um, <clears throat> a reminder, this is a Linux Foundation and Hyperledger Foundation meeting, so the Linux antitrust policy and the Hyperledger Code of Conduct is in effect. Um, don't collude and be nice to one another as you don't collude. Um, any announcements, um, introductions, um, requests for change to the agenda? If anyone has anything to um, contribute right now, step up to the microphone. Uh, hi, Stephen. It's Pradeep here. Hi, Pradeep. Yeah, so just wanted to discuss about the images and releases uh, which are uh, being done. So if that can be added to the agenda, that would be... Um, th and that was the... Um, I saw the issue you posted. So this is about the issue you posted about which are the <laughs> official releases? Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, actually, let me put that after the BBS discussion. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Um, for announcements, I'm going to be, um, and, and requests, I'm going to be at, um, in Europe for the next three weeks. I'm going to three conferences, one per week, um, EIC in Berlin, um, Identity Week in Amsterdam. And then, um, so those two I'm going with, um, with Sovereign. And then for the third week, I'm going to go to DICE, which is the, um, uh, IIW Europe. Um, so that one I'm just going to do on my own. Um, so if the, the one thing is, if you're going to be there, let me let, look, love to connect. Second one is, um, I am going to need a host for the, for one Acapug and two maintainers meeting. If, um, um, uh, Daniel, I wondered if you are going to be available for those. You're, um, I will not be doing conference travel so i i am available so okay i wouldn't i wouldn't mind spreading it out uh, amongst yeah, others okay. who are interested but yeah i'm i'm available as backup at, at the very uh, least yeah. okay emiliano you said you would as well yeah i can help if necessary so all right so emiliano you got it i will i will definitely be working this whole time so i will coordinate page updates and making sure those get done um i may attend but I'd prefer somebody else took the host. So um, Emiliano, I'll, I'll give you the task. Sounds good. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, so next up, um, Jamie, code coverage and where we are on that. Um, yeah, there's a PR that's ready. Um, there's just a little bit of work I basically have a question because there's like, um, there's one check to make sure the unit tests run and pass, and it's on a workflow that I removed. So if that could get changed when we merge it, then I think it's ready to go. If not, then I can figure something out. But um, I don't understand. Does it need to get? changed before the PR is merged or can we merge the PR and then address it? You can merge it or you could change it before it gets merged. 
it's on i don't really know why it's set up that way it's like there's an inner workflow that multiple other workflows call and it's the checks on the inner workflow when it just has to be on the pr unit test workflow make sure that passes so i don't really know why it's set up that way but so you're saying this is a dis existing functionality that's sort of set up in the oddly. repo yeah okay but anyway um, it's not a big deal if i get a comment on it to change it i can change it but i was just just looking for a comment on it yeah no right now not, yeah. not clear to me what needs to be done yeah i'm confused so Okay, so the repo has. Do, do you want to share and or do you want me to jump somewhere? If you just open the PR. Okay. I'll go to that link. Um, now all the depend about stuff. Is... Yeah, exactly. Oh, two pages of PRs. Do we know the number? This one right here. So if you go down. See, there's a uh, down a bit further, all the way to the bottom, I guess. See, there's these checks. This yeah. test Python one is stuck. Test Python. Yeah. So if that check just gets changed to the actual PR test one right above it, then that won't get stuck anymore. But so it's like settings in the repo that I don't have access to. Oh, so okay. We we we, we did that specifically to ensure that the Python tests passed. So, is that not being called anymore? I changed this to be a workflow action instead of a workflow workflow that other workflows call. So, I don't know if that's a problem. I can change it, but the PR tests are still doing the same thing that they were doing before. I don't really know why it's on this inner workflow or not. It's on but the I, inner it's on the inner workflow because those were the actual tests that were done. Um and we we wanted that to be able to because in that inner workflow we have the ability to run more than one version of Python. Yeah, uh, so I the created the I changed the workflow so it still does that, but it's not getting called from PR tests anymore. Anyway, it's hard because I can't see what the settings are in the repo and stuff to change anything. But yeah, I guess I just don't understand what's changed or or what so, the thoughts behind it are. So I'll I'll have to review the PR and have a look at it because Yeah, um, if you review it and tell me that it I can make it work the way it was before. I just some just a little bit better this way i think but anyway yeah it was just it, the reason we had it that way was to to um avoid duplication yeah so that we only had the test going in one place with a reusable workflow okay anyway i think that's the one thing that needs to get changed everything else is working so okay so who needs to change that you or or wade Wade just needs to review it and tell me if I need to change anything. But, okay. Yeah. So I'll, I need to review the PR and see if the new, like how the new one is working and then change the, um, the uh, checks appropriately if we need to. Okay. But yeah, most of the work should be done on it. Okay, well, let's get that done because I'd like to get that one wrapped up. Um, but that does bring us back to, and then, and so this is going to give us when a PR is completed, when a PR is um, added, the Sonar Cloud code coverage will be reported on the PR as opposed to the thing we get today, which is nothing. Yeah. That's, that's the whole point of this one, right? Yeah, because there's code that's been added that's not unit tested, really. And now at least we'll be able to see without. Right. See what the coverage is. So. 
Okay. Before okay. we merge it. <laughs> yeah. Oops. I did want to go backwards here. Let me let's go back here. Depend upon PR. So this is the urgent thing, and it's the urgent thing on pretty much every repo we have, which is we're we're dying on um dependabot PRs. So we have 20 open dependabot PRs right now. Um so the question is, how do we get rid of these? Some of them obviously trivial, the markdown and and uh, some of the things to do with um, generating stuff. Uh, other ones are, you know, Docker file things where we're pulling in older versions when we should be pulling in the newest version, and you know, a bunch of things like that. Um, Patrick. Yeah, I'm just uh, wondering what kind of uh, review process would be need needed for those, and uh, is there some security assessment that would need to be done, or do we trust Dependabot to sort of take care of security when it recommends PRs? There's two. There's two different levels to what Dependabot is is um, is recommending. So. The security side of things, whenever there's a, a, a patch for a secure a vulnerability, um, Dependabot will always do that regardless of, of the configuration that we've set for it. Um, so you'll see those. Uh, what we've changed, what we've added was we've added a configuration to, to, to Dependabot to also recommend upgrades to things so that we can do a better job of keeping up to date on, on uh, modules and libraries and various things. So that's what most of these are, are the, the upgrade recommendations. So um, as far as security wise, uh, I don't think there needs to be any security assessment because Dependabot would, it is taking that into consideration when it's, when it's doing this. Um, my recommendation on how to deal with volumes of, of, um, recommendations like this is first of all, do one pass and close the ones that, um, don't make any sense or we're not going to deal with, or that we need to defer. And then, uh, somebody do a second pass to update all the modules and do it in a single PR. And then once that PRs merge, Dependabot will, um, reevaluate and automatically close uh, any that have been addressed. Um, dealing with them individually is um, too arduous. It, it, um, it's better to do them together. Okay. Um, and the reason why we're not grouping them together is because we've got feedback from developers saying that grouping them together causes uh, potential conflicts. So we have we we have control over how Dependabot does it. We could have it group um, various things together. So if we start seeing patterns um, where it's making you know good choices, and we are confident that if we group those particular uh, recommendations together into a single PR, that we'd have you know good confidence that it would actually work. Um, we can update the configuration to do that. But and you you mentioned the first pass to determine the PRs that don't make sense. Like yeah. why in what scenario would you see that applicable? If they all only want to update the dependencies to a new version, like why would that not make sense? What's a um, example? Probably the best example of that is on the uh, Indie Node and Indie Plenum repositories when it's recommending Docker upgrades from currently um, 20.04 20, 20 to 24.04 on Ubuntu. Um, okay. That doesn't right. yep. that doesn't make sense for Indie Node because we haven't added support for that version of Ubuntu yet. Um, yep. We may or may not see that in Akapai, but it, that those are just sort of, you know, some recommendations like that don't make sense for the current state of the project. Right. I think what I, I'm seeing here and I like is it actually went to update the Python version in the demos, which is yes. kind of interesting. 
because I know, uh, you know, when people run demos, it might be different than the latest version, and that's not a re not really good. Yeah. So this one that that um, mm. Stephen is looking at right now might not make sense to jump to uh, Python three point twelve. Yeah. Um, because we don't have any tests. We don't have any official tests on Py three point twelve. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. So it would make sense the one that, you know, want to update the actual Python packages themselves, but when it comes to base Docker image or Python version, yeah. Yeah, might not make, make sense. sense. I can hit the button. Yeah, you can hit the button. Okay, so are there any others in that list? Let me go back to that. Uh, whoops. But yeah, I mean, it just it makes sense to go through and just, you know, and, clo close close the ones that don't make sense because it's then you're not dealing with, you know, your your list is smaller. And what what advantage does it have for someone else to create a PR bundling them than to just merge the PR recommended by the Pandabot directly? Um, because every time every time you merge a PR, then the way that the repository, um, the, the branch protection is, you need to update um, the other PRs, which will kick off tests. And it's just right, a, yeah, a, a yeah, nasty yeah. long loop. It's better just to do it as, as one yeah. in one go and have um, depend about reevaluate and close everything. And would we okay. see this as a periodic thing? Like uh, every month we do one PR, or it's going to be based on volume? It depends on the updates. I th the, obviously, these first ones are going to be a larger volume because it's been a long, you know, it, it's obviously the first time it's run. Yeah. Um, it's going to run every week. And what I've seen on other repositories is the volume is, is less as we move forward because, you know, there aren't as many updates. Yeah, it's just the the initial um, recommendations are quite extensive. So the the first step is done. It was only that one. I don't see any others here that are that. Well, obviously, we don't know the details of very many of these, but I see. I see another one. Uh, I test third, third from the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, then we just need somebody to go through and and have a look at those and and you know update. Is this going to reopen another PR in a week or whatever for the same thing? No. Okay. Not till it goes to 313, right? Yeah. 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 So this 312 is Hyperledger. Uh, sorry, is uh, Akapai itself. So those are okay. Postgres 14 to 16? Hmm. Yeah, that might not make sense, but. But it, it failed the test. It, so, it, you know. So close this one. Um, I'm trying to get past that one step because what we need is to get to the second step. And, and without the community, uh, I don't think any individual is, unless they're very confident of what they're doing, will know which ones to close. So that's why yeah. I'd rather do this step in, well, in the community. I think like the like the ones with the X that didn't pass the test, clearly we won't, won't want to merge them. Like the little red X, I think that means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that one, way. we probably do. This one, we probably do. So that's not a... Hmm. Some of the integration tests failed because it depended about opened up a whole bunch of... PRs at one time. Yeah. <laughs> so it got all... We've yeah. seen that before where the, the... The, fail the failures might be false, false negatives. Okay. Some of them were due to the ledger getting overwhelmed that we've seen before. Uh, some of the, I was looking at some of the fails. So um, that, that that Postgres thirteen to sixteen, I I I personally can't, you know, make a call on that one. I don't know how well Akapai supports Postgres sixteen. Might work just fine. 
Wait, no. Uh, we know it supports 15, right? We just don't know if it supports 16. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can say that I've been using 16 in all my okay. sort of experiments, and I never had an issue with Postgres. But okay. Okay, good. I, I, well, there I, you I go. Didn't do, I didn't do it. Yeah. Okay. What about PyTest here? Um, this is just a minor update, so that's not likely to be an issue, right? You can update that one as long as the test pass i think yeah test pass and then this one async pg uh that is that the pg is postgres in that case i don't even i would think so yes that's probably a ascar the demo repo has all its own requirements that are okay yeah postgres yeah um, so maybe we try running the tests again because that could have been. Yeah. Okay. And then the next thing is um, any volunteers willing to to do the, the uh, did I just kick it off again? Oh, I see. Hate when it does that. Uh, it drives me nuts. How do I get to the top so I can click this? Sorry about this. Anyone have um, availability to do this one? To do yeah. this work, which is um, basically manually go through each of these pull requests, the depend about pull requests, and um, apply whatever is in in the in the in the uh, change to a to a manual update that you then submit i can uh, i can do it okay so just submit a new pr with all these changes bundled yep okay. um most of them is just i think running the tests these are the ones this one and this one and this one probably require additional work because you've got to go through the demo the multi demo to make sure the multi demo works and the playground to make sure the playground works. Um, so those well, are the ones that are likely to be a little more painful. Yeah. What, what I can do is just take care of at least the Python modules one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then you can leave, you know, you can point this one to me or assign this one to me because it's going to be in the um, read the doc stuff and I can take a look at that. I don't see why it would even be fail. What this is probably a, uh, a a false fail, but I can check that one. Um, okay. I do have a PR in draft right now to to try to. Um, I think it's yeah the top one. Yeah. So I'm gonna open this soon, and it's so on some PRs it's only gonna it's gonna run a slightly smaller subset of tests. I still need that. And then on when you create a release, it will run the, a larger set of tests. So they're running a bit faster than they are now. They're like 40 minutes instead of some of them are runs yeah. are taking over an hour. Okay. But we could possibly even do less with the PR. So it's kind of like a balancing act, but yeah. Um, I'll open this up and I want to get some conversation about which are the most important tests to run. Cause, um, okay. But yeah, that should be coming soon. Cause yeah, some of the ones that fail intermittently too, I'm not sure how important they are. So we could maybe only do those. Okay. Um, other PRs we're talking about. Um, this one, I think I'd really like to see done. Uh, are you close to having this one ready to go to review? Look pretty straightforward. Yeah, I just don't know if it's the, it fixes it for sure, but yeah. Um, yeah, I can open it and 
get some conversation about it because there's different ways that you could fix it. But okay, the, this is um, more important in Credo because I I'm pretty sure that this is where um, we've seen a bunch of errors with lawyers come up every once in a while in our use cases, and I'm pretty sure this is the cause of it. Which is, and I'm pretty sure that what happens is we open a new RevRedge and it's the first one before we revoked anything. Um, I think that scenario we're hitting. Mean to be snipping, I was so. just trying to throw out some other ideas. Okay. Um, any other ones that people want to, um, Patrick, I called this one out. I, did you, I think you might've talked about this last time, but um, it, it, what do you, is this one ready to go? And um, It's not ready to go. There's a few things I still want to get to understand. So at, at this moment, like the flag works in my PR. So you can put this flag and then just, you can start an agent with just specifying, for example, no ledger, no transport, and just the yeah. admin parameters, and it's going to yeah. run and be functional. What I want to do is to um, make sure like a few tests are failing now. So make sure that, yeah. the, uh, you know, this option is integrated properly and find a way maybe to, if you set this flag to remove the protocol based routes from the open yeah. API page. Uh, so, so some tweaking like this. Uh, so yeah, I, I put this there. So maybe s someone familiar with the code could just you know, say, yeah, this is a decent direction or the direction is wrong and so on. And yeah. It, that's the kind of feedback I'm looking at now, but it's still very much in draft. Uh, okay. uh, if, but uh, once we're done talking about this, I, I would actually like to talk about my other PR, the uh, the proof key okay. stuff. So I don't know if there's any feedback on this so far. Or the... um, it would make sense that a lot of the tests would fail since they do lots of ledger things. It'll be interesting uh, to figure out what yeah, to do. Yeah, no, the, the tests are failing right now. Uh, it's just because uh, the way, like if I don't include the no transport option and some of the, because I did some conditional oh, course, and then like the, the flag right. is not there. And so right. I just need the to- The flag's not there when you wrote Yeah, run. I just need to review the, the logic a bit. Okay. Yeah. And you got some feedback from Daniel. He likes the direction, says continue to run with it. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to continue to run with it. Excellent. Uh, I'd like to talk about the proof key ones, uh, if we have time. I feel like this one is... Yeah, um, I'm just above. looking for it. Yeah, it's right above. Right above, yep. So this one, I would be quite ready to pull out the draft. I just fixed a thing that was filling the test this morning. So it's it's really simple. So in the basically, in the wallet component, there's already a function to get a did info from Verkey. So the function was already there. Yeah. Uh, what I've done is I've just added a check that if an options that I've called the options field uh, proof key uh, to sort of follow the proof type uh, yeah. option that we had previously. And if someone provides a proof key and they put the Verkey as it's saved in the wallet, so uh, it doesn't take into consideration different encoding. So it's really just this Verkey need to exist in the wallet. Uh, yeah. This will take precedence over the issuer of the credential to find the matching key pair. So this covers, let's say we have, we want to publish our public key at two different DIT web endpoints. Yeah. Uh, well, in the wallet, we can only save one DID associated with the key. So th this is just another way to go get the keeper we want to sign with. Uh, and this is a bit how the JSON LD sign was operating. Okay. Uh, so I could do more testing, but it seemed to do what I want. I, I would probably reach out to Jason, see if it fixes what he's trying to implement. Okay. Uh, so basically I've added a function, just duplicated the existing functions for to refer the um, get the info from did I just did the basically the same thing like I did info for Verkey and I just replaced issuer did with the Verkey uh, there could be optimization probably uh, I know the other PR was about you know making this pluggable so I don't know if 
sort of a mix of both ideas would be preferable, but yeah, for now, it's, it's the way. Daniel. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, so uh, first, just to clarify, so this is us specifying basically the base 58 for a key in order to specify what key we want it to be signed with as opposed to providing the did. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you still provide the, the issuer did in the credential, but that might not be the did that you associated as a key pair in your wallet. So if I register a did sub in my wallet, you know, the it's going to be an unqualified did that's recorded and there's going to be a ver key. And then I might want to take this ver key and host it so that it's resolvable by a did web endpoint. So in my credential, I'm actually going to use the did web address, but that did web wasn't registered in my wallet. But I can tell Akapai to use this ver key to sign it. And then this, of course, it will be the controller's responsibility so that the did web can be reached somewhere else. So um, as a... Wow. Yeah, uh, let's see. So if instead of um, providing the base 58 of the key in order to identify it, um, mm -hmm. if there was perhaps an alternative for us to be able to associate any number of key IDs, so verification yeah. method IDs with a yeah. key, um, would that solve the same problem? I, I think so, because then we could actually just use the verification method field, which is already in the options. Yeah. Um, I went with this because all the functions were already there and it's sort of a... Yeah, yeah, I, I, for sure. I, think... I, I get, I understand the approach and I think it's like, it, it fits in how Akapai is doing things right now uh, pretty well. The, the main thing that makes me hesitate in going this direction is that we're kind of actively trying to get away from identifying keys by base 58 encoded values, especially yeah. as we look forward to didcom v2 and stuff. Um, I agree. I, I think... and I, 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 I'm not a big fan either. Uh, I mm -hmm. think this a lot of this came because it was just the way that Verki were represented on Indy and, and whatnot. Uh, yeah. But with other you know, key representation, you might, yeah, it, it just makes it a bit tricky. Uh, I would like to see like maybe a redesign of the wallet, the way they store public key and the way you access them. Uh, but I feel like that's a, a bigger challenge. So as it happens in the DITCOM v2 stuff that we've been talking about recently, um, this was actually a requirement that we ended up having as well where we needed to be be able to identify a key by uh by kid by verification method id um and mm -hmm. so we, we've actually got uh, a, a simple mechanism that allows uh one key id for each key and i think we need to eventually expand it to support many key ids yeah. for a given key that's um, the that's the like yeah because just having one verification ID to one key map like you get yeah. the same limitations. Uh, what would be nice is that once you created this key pair, you can tag on an alias or, or yeah. uh, whatever that's... amount of alias. Like, right. you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, this is... that um, sounds way better. Um, is it? Can we get there? Because this sounds this sounds hacky. Yeah. Um, so in the didcom v2 PR that we have open, uh, we've added to the wallet interface and assign kid to key method. Yeah. Um, the implementation behind the interface is currently uh, limited to one value, um, but we can update the actual implementation to better support multiple values. Uh, but but like all the interface changes have already taken place. Uh, to, to and is it uh, is it like a two step? Like first you register your key and then you add IDs that refer to it, or it's a, like a one step operation? Like you create the key. It is. It is one or it is okay. Let's see. So you can create a key and optionally provide uh, a kid if you already know the kid uh, at creation but for like a did peer you don't actually know the identifier for the key until after you've created the key because the key is necessary to create the actual document which creates the did yeah. so it, we've got this circular dependency so anyways um so if you know the kid on key creation you can go ahead and assign it 
um, but there's a, a an, an after the fact assigned key uh, or assigned kid to key um, as well. But it overwrites whatever is already there, right? Uh, if if none was given, uh, then it would just not have an explicit kid associated with it. Um, it would still be identified by the base 58 of the public key um, yep. because that's how Akpai has always done it, of course. Um, and, and so adding a kid just added a tag onto the value, but we would have and to if, adjust that a little bit in order to associate multiple and if kids. You, if you provided a kid and then you associate a kid afterwards, is it going to replace that initial? Uh, the way it's currently implemented in RPR, yes, it would replace it. Okay. Yeah, so finding a way, and do you just like on a high level, do you see adding this functionality that instead of overriding it, it just adds it to a list? Would that be a trivial change to make or is it uh, a bit um, it, I, I'll have to think about how we need to go about doing that. I, I don't think it's a trivial change. We're going to have to figure out yeah, what, what the right way to, to scale up okay. would be because of... But I'm um, thinking, why not just make the kid an array and then you just add IDs yeah. in that array? I think it is possible for tags to be arrays of strings, um, but that's something I'd have to review. So the, the critical piece being we want oh, to be I able see. to look up, we want to be able to look up the value by any one of the... Any one of the IDs, kids, exactly. Yeah. And do that efficiently. Um, takes a little bit of, of, I think, I think it is possible with the wallet query language, like I said, but I, I'd have to take a look. Okay. Um, so, so my, my current stance is, uh, if the JSON LD gets removed, the endpoint, I would like to have at least something like this available. Uh, because right now, like we can still use the old JSON LD sign endpoint to do this. But if that endpoints get removed without an alternative, it is going to limit a lot of the uh, projects we have and the 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 thing we have. So, uh, what's the time frame for this sort of uh, alternative yeah. to be merged in? Like, did it come v two getting all this these things in? Like how? Um, so we've been trying to approach the DidConv2 changes as like incremental changes that are are non-destructive along the way. Uh, yeah. So we've actually got this PR open now and it's it's ready for review um, for the DidConv2. That includes the interface changes that we've discussed. Um, I, I posted a couple of links in, in the chat um, if you would, are interested in checking those out. Um, uh, the modifications that we just discussed to the implementation where we could associate multiple kids is of course not implemented, but I think it that's would something a... that we could, we, we could easily add that, I think, to this PR if, if we To this to. PR? Okay. Or we could merge and do a subsequent PR. I'm, I'm cool either way, but yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. so it sounds like the, the best path would be either we, we close Patrick's PR and he contributes over here or you yep. get to the point where you're comfortable with it and he gets what he needs. Is that right? Sounds like it. I think so. I'll have a look at this definitely uh, because th this would actually be the the, the better solution because yes. like I mentioned, we already have the verification method field in the options and this gives the kid. So you could just put your verification method ID and, you know, find yeah. it with this okay good um and based on the discussion i've seen the sooner we can merge the experimental i love that um the better so let's yeah let's see if we can get this one done and then figure out how to add another one let's see what the next step is in this implementation yeah okay and daniel if you could work you know coordinate with patrick on either Here's how how we think it's get done, or 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 where Patrick can focus to help figure out how it's done. That'd be yeah. good. Yeah, For awesome. Sure. I Excellent. think we understand the. I think we understand yeah. the need. Good. Excellent. Um, okay. Um, how are we doing for time? Okay, let's get back to the two things here. Um, so we got those, and we added the discussion about. Um, the other PR Patrick had. So um, our current issue right now, the biggest um, 
thing I want to see solved is that we can support M1 Max directly and natively, and we don't have um, developers having to futz around to be able to use their M M star silicon. Um, the thing that's holding us up from that is the BBS library. Um, it does not support ARM, and therefore you have to use the, you know, the multi multi-platform on M1 and you got to do fancy things to enable that. So basically any developer comes in, they try to run it and they first hit that roadblock and they have to figure out how to solve it. Is that an accurate description of the problem? Yeah, I think it's yes. fairly accurate. Okay. So we, uh, a key and Andrew put in some things and asked the BBS library supplier Matter Global, and they have not answered in basically a month, um, despite pestering. So we haven't heard anything back from them. We can try to continue that, but we're not getting far that way. Um, what I didn't realize, um, so I came up with a list of options, and in talking to Andrew about it yesterday, he added this first one, which sounds like the right thing, which is, if we create the images that don't have the BBS signatures library in it, um, then, and create guidance that says, oh, if you need BBS signatures, you have to add to the, uh, you have to add install time, basically at, at Docker build time or whatever, you have to add that. Um, then anyone who doesn't add it would, be able to operate with on an M1 without any changes and, and could just use it. And only when they wanted to go to add BBS would they have to fall back into explicitly adding the library to their implement or their deployment and deal with the Docker M1 issues. Does that sound like a reasonable way to go? Um, do people understand what <laughs> what steps would be needed for that? I don't quite. I I think I get it, but basically, we would our images would no longer have BBS signatures in it. If you ever wanted to use it, you would have to get our image and add BBS signatures to the um, resulting image. Um, so you get there, um, Patrick. Just curious, what's the difference between that and the option three? They seem very similar making it um, into a plugin. Yeah. So the idea here is we don't change any of the Python code. We leave the Python code with the BBS there. But if you ever want to actually use it, you have to explicitly update your deployment to add the BBS library. If you are using our artifacts, such as our Docker images, and you want to use BBS, you would have to explicitly add that um, in versus it automatically being there, which is what we have today. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, yeah. OK, Colton. Sorry, Stephen, it's, it's Tim here. I'm just trying to understand. And so this, like if we were doing a typical production deployment, would this also like, um, would have to do this extra step, or is it? If you want to use BBS signatures, if you if your deployment does not use BBS signatures, then you don't have to do anything. Okay. It just seems like a lot of change for the not for I understand obviously the importance of M1 and development and all that, but you're impacting sort of production deployments of Occupy for a development um option, I guess. I just know if it 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 seems it does seem slightly heavy handed, but I mean I understand. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if there are other BBS plus libraries, I thought reference libraries coming out with IETF work um, yes. other than that. And that's and that's this that's the second option. Oh, but Colton, right go there. ahead. <laughs> Colton, go ahead. Yeah. So when you're talking about uh, disabling it, um, one of the things that came to mind is, and I've, I've seen a lot of Docker images do this in the past where they'll have. Um, they'll have different things in the Docker image tag name and they'll mm -hmm. do multiple releases. And you'll find this, especially for like the distro repos where they'll have a slim version and a regular Debian version. But I just thought for the release tags, what if we had something that said like 
without BBS or uh, whatever it is. And uh, specifically for release versions, if you're doing nightly, then you'd end up not having BBS. Yeah. But that would allow production, like they don't have to add a Docker build step to their production pipeline. They just have to use the production image that says use BBS or don't use BBS. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Akif? Yeah, it's going to echo that. That sounds like a great idea. The only thing question I have is if we're removing BBS, is there Python code that needs to be sort of deactivated from this or not well, included? That's the question of that to me is this option, which is you entirely move it to a plugin and yeah. and you remove the Python code. This option is you leave the Python code there, but anyone who wants to use it has to get the right Docker configuration. Remember, yeah. this is really just the Docker um, artifact that we're talking about here. Yeah, at present, yeah, so uh, we would just remove library is optional. And so when you install Akapai, you have to explicitly say, you know, with the extra. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we could, we could call it like Akapai base without it. And then, yeah, or something like that. I yeah, guess the, the other, other question I had was. We have to decide which one is, which one <laughs> remains the same tag as we're using. So uh, others won't be, so we, they won't be disrupted. Um, um, Patrick? Yeah. Um, the, for the question you just asked, I, I would say like the, the one that has the special requirements would need the additional tag. I think that's what I would answer to that. Um, one, something else, so I, I forgot who told me, but someone told me that the BBS implementation in ICAPI wasn't quite uh, up to the specification. Uh, so I'm, my, you know, my question would be, has there been any people using this and how have they fared when credential want to be verified by other implementations of BBS? Okay. So what Andrew told me was basically there's most of the implementations as far as he's aware are non-interoperable implementations of BBS. And that's why the IETF and, and that movement is happening. The one we are using, for example, he thinks is only interoperable with itself. Um, so if a some other implementation, some other library or, or some other Aries implementation uses a different BBS library, there's a decent chance they they won't align, which is is pretty bad. Um, from what I understand, this the Matter Global one is one that Mike Lauder created a few years ago, and he doesn't know how much update it's had since he implemented it. Um, so um, it's not clear which one to switch to. That's why I put this in. So that goes to this next one. So the so the next obvious is to simply switch the BBS library to like the doc library, the doc networks library. Um, but that may not be interoperable. So that opens a question there. That's why that one is, you know, I've got the comment not clear which one to switch to. Um, Emiliano? Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if the, I don't know, both because we already have the pattern for the plugins, but also because we would need to update uh, to the next gen signatures, regardless when they come out. If yeah. Having a plugin and maintaining that in these in these uh, scenarios probably is better. That way, we have the optional plugin that can be that can be installed if necessary, and we update the same code the moment that we have to update to the next gen implementation, rather than having to kind of massage things into a, a new pattern for us at least now, which might still be valuable. I'm not saying we don't have we shouldn't do it at all, but like. Uh, massage things into a new pattern and then have to backtrack potentially later to because we do the maintenance regardless and then stuff goes in. The plugin option also technically allows for multiple different BBS implementations uh, yeah. as people experiment or new libraries come out, we can test them individually. 
Dax Hockman. Okay, so that one, rather than worrying about Docker images and M1 and so on, we simply entirely remove BBS from the core and move it into a Akapai plugins implementation and document it as a breaking change. Anyone who wants to continue with it needs to add the plugin to their implementation and um, and to continue to use it. The, the challenge with that is both the effort to move it into an implementation and yeah. making sure that it still works. So that's the that's obviously the the cry uh, the the issue. Yeah, most development e effort. Yeah, it has to be assessed. My concern with like having it like you know uh, documented but implicitly not included is that it's not explicit and people yeah. will will trip get tripped by it pretty easily. I mean, either way, the announcement is here's the breaking change. Here's what's going to happen. There's there's a breaking change no matter what if we make the default mm. not include BBS library. Anyone who's but, using the BBS library needs to change. But for uh, me, Akif. It's... Akif. Um, I actually want to. I agree with Emiliano on this. If we're going to be moving Occupy to like towards sort of slimming it out to core stuff. I think it's a good step to move it into a plugin so that you can opt into certain things, right? Because right now it's included as part of the core. And yes, yep. it's a lot of development effort to move out, but it's the direction that we're moving in at some point. And then that gives us the flexibility to re-add it in as part of a plugin with like what Colton said, as uh, you could pick and then, then pick and choose which uh, BBS implementation you want to use. So I kind of like that approach, even though it's the most amount of effort. You could use BBS or BBS plus or. <laughs> yeah. So it seems like it kind of moves in the right direction. It just would take a bit of effort. I guess the question is, is would you want this in before a 1.0 release or would that be pushing it? Well, that's the somewhat the question we're getting to, which is um, where, where does this fit? how important is this how much pain is being seen by by individuals with this problem so i'll just give my my opinion on it because i work yeah. with an m1 and there are points there are times where it's virtually unusable for me and i end up switching to a windows platform just so i can get through development so when i'm working on traction for example there's just i can't build it but that's just me it could be the way that i'm doing stuff it doesn't necessarily mean that um other people aren't running into the same are running into the same issues but for certain pieces of development i tend to run into that problem a lot okay all right um let's keep having oh patrick go ahead so i i just wanted to to add that yeah i'm not a big fan of having code that's not functional in the code base i think that's that doesn't yeah. sound uh, really good so. yeah Okay, um, I'd like to get to this one because um, I think there's valuable comments in that PR. So, Pradeep, can you go ahead? Yeah. So, this uh, uh, issue uh, I created just uh, to make sure that the releases which we are doing, so 0 0.11, 0 0.12, and uh, all the subsequent patches which we are doing. So which of these releases are uh, official releases or uh, supported releases? And I also found some RFCs and release documentations uh, as references. So um, there is actually a, a example which we can follow. So Hyperledger Fabric has a release strategy in which they have a specific version mentioned as an LTS, so long-term supported version. So this LTS is being scanned regularly for security vulnerabilities, and then um, the security patches are being done on those images. Okay. And People are um, actually the community, uh, they don't uh, have to use the latest version, right? So these depender boards and all the PRs which it fixes are all only for the latest releases. But what if the um, they are using the previous version? So this is applicable to us, right? So we were using uh, 0.11 release. And when we were scanning the image regularly, we found vulnerabilities. So that's when uh, uh, we thought that uh, we should bring this into the community so that 
whoever is using the previous images or the uh, old images. So they should have some support or some documentation as well. Uh, so that's the main intention of this uh, discussion or this uh, issue. Okay. Um, is, the, is there spect, I haven't looked at this. I've, I've read through this. Um, I haven't looked at this. Is there specific guidance in here of how to do this? Yeah, so this is uh, for the fabric uh, which they yeah. have uh, released. So in this one, uh, they are just mentioning like how the releases are going to be maintained, right? So if there is an yeah. LTS release, so how that LTS is going to be supported. So if, for example, if we say that 0 0.10 and 0 0.11 and 0 0.12 are supported for us, so we can have that as an LTS and then uh, we can make sure that uh, those are being scanned regularly for security vulnerabilities and also uh, the discussions which we had, right? So the BBS plus signature, the code which is working, which is not working. So all those can be uh, made uh, clear in those images or supported versions. So. Okay. What I'm looking, so, so is it a combination of we declare which minor version will be LTS and so there will be patches applied to it. That's one. Okay. And then how do we express that? Yeah, if you go back to the uh, issue, so there is a last uh, link over there. So we can add a section in the readme saying that, yeah, so releases. Got it. Okay. So current release LTS, historic LTS releases. So which one is the current LTS release? So that we can specify. Say for example, 0.12 is the latest one, right? So we can assume 0.11 is the LTS release and we can make Got sure it. that 11 is being supported. And once 0.12 is fully done, when we release 0.13, we can make the LTS as 0.12. So that is uh, a strategy which we can follow. Okay. All right. So, so, that, so that gives us specific steps. All right. Um, we're at okay. time. So let me follow up. Um, but it's in the comments here, Emiliano. Yeah, just some back and forth about what workarounds could be used in which scenarios. Like there's some scenarios that don't really have, at least that I know of, workarounds. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll add those. I'll add those to the notes. Sure. Um, thanks all. I think this, both conversations probably need to continue at the maintainers meeting next week. Um, and then as necessary in the ACAPUG. I think these are both important things. Um, I think we're probably ready for this. And I thank you, Pradeep, for making it practical what we have to do. Um, but let's talk about, uh, uh, it would be reasonable, uh, and I don't know if you're willing to do this, Pradeep, but maybe propose a PR that, um, suggests which versions and 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 how to move this forward. Yeah, would you be good. willing to do that? Okay. Yeah, do that. Yes. Okay, and and include in that um, any other steps we have to follow, like what additional GitHub actions are needed or anything like that to do the scanning and things like that. Yeah. Wade? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's probably good that we we do a PR and maybe even a a, a uh, an issue for it because it, it's it's a bigger it's a bigger undertaking than most people will realize when we're talking about LTS releases. That means that we will be maintaining multiple lines of code, yep. including yep. vulnerability patches, updates, and bug fixes for those versions yeah. yes. throughout their life. Yes. But the okay, yeah. In, in our, okay, yeah. Um, the issue is here. So uh, altering this to LTS, list of supported stable images for use, we can have the conversation here, but I'm interested in the PR that says, okay, here are, here are the specific actions to be taken. And so we can evaluate what those actions are. You know, Pradeep, if you could propose what you think are best practices and, and manageable things and then the community can debate um each one so you don't have to be you know don't don't try to be perfect on it draft up what you think is is a reasonable approach and then we'll go from there does that make sense 
Yep, sure. Perfect. Good. All right, folks. We're over time. Better go. Thanks all for attending. Uh, recording will be posted. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone.